While we patiently wait for Tales of the Valiant to release to the public, Cobalt Press has been dropping tidbits of information about the RPG on their website for a while now. And one of those articles they dropped on their website about Tales of the Valiant is about a new class they're introducing to Tales of the Valiant called The Mechanist. Hi there fellow roleplayers and game masters, my name is Mr. Trask and this is The Mechanist by Cobalt Press, a brand new class for Tales of the Valiant. Now, Tales of the Valiant is a 5th edition based RPG, so this is also a brand new class for 5th edition, basically. Now, Tales of the Valiant, if you do not know what it is, uh, welcome. <laughs> uh, it is the new RPG that is set to release uh, by Cobalt Press. It will have a player's guide, a monster's fold, and a game master's guide or whatever it is called. And this is one of the classes that's going to be in it. Now, all of the other, like, famous 5th edition classes are going to have a version in Tales of the Valiant, like, uh, I don't know, the Cleric, the Fighter, the Barbarian, whatever. Um, but the mechanic is one of those brand new ones. Now, we don't have the full thing, we just have two really, really bad screenshots here, uh, with, like, like really vague uh, text that you can barely read, but we can read it. And, like, some information uh, from uh, the designer, whose name is really hard to pronounce for me, like, the first name is Celeste, which is pretty, pretty uh, easy. Um, and then it's Conno Conno Witch or or Conno Witch Conno Witch. So I'm just gonna say Celeste Conno Witch, uh, lead designer of the player's guide. Now for me, Tales of the Valiant is really exciting in the players department because there's going to be like most of the changes towards fifth edition. I feel are on the player side, which is good. I like it. Now, the mechanist, uh, the reason I want to talk about this is um, it because I really, really, really like it. I like the approach they've taken to this. There's one thing about this that I really dislike, like, like, viciously dislike, um, and I would change in a way. I don't know exactly how, uh, but I like the overall ID and thing about the mechanist. And the mechanist, basically, now the first thing you see is this person with, uh, I think they're an half or whatever, I'm sorry to quickly interrupt this broadcast, but I am designing a tier 1 adventure for Tales of the Valiant as we speak. As a matter of fact, it is fully written, it is fully funded on Kickstarter, and it is in its final week to be uh, funded or overfunded or whatever. As a matter of fact, if we reach 9,000 uh, euros funded, everybody who backs gets a free Foundry Virtual Tabletop version. So if you're interested in a adventure designed by me and Dot Steverson, Make sure to click the link in the description below. With like a bunch of tools, so they are really good at <clears throat> fixing stuff and tinkering with stuff and whatever, doing with stuff, all right? And, but they also have, as you can see, a magical weapon. So your first ID would be, oh, they're probably a spellcaster. They are not a spellcaster. They are, in essence, a material class. As you can see from... Um, the, the base class features right here, uh, they have hit dice 1d10 per mechanist level, so it is quite a bulky class, it's the same thing as a fighter if I'm not mistaken, 10 plus constitution modifier, all of that stuff, they have light armor, medium armor and shields, no heavy armor, but they have medium armor, simple weapons and martial weapon, weapons, uh, thinker tools, additional tools, all of that stuff, uh, a starting equipment, even like martial weapon and a shield or two simple weapons, a light crossbow, all of that stuff, so they are quite the martial class. Class. Celeste even goes as far as saying they're not even a half spell casting class. Uh, uh, where is oh, right here? It's not even a half spell casting class like the Ranger or the Paladin. Uh, that really intrigued me because I was like, how are going they going to approach that? And they did it in a very cool way, and that's why I wanted to point this out. This makes me exciting for excited for the uh, mechanist. Now, basically, the main class feature, we only have two pages. We can see, like, everything that is in here. Heroic boon and subclass, another subclass feature. We don't know what it is. Uh, always prepare. We don't know what it is. Rapid, uh, rapid augment. We don't know what it is. But we have an idea of, like, the progression table. But we have two pages. And the main thing about it is the shard of creation. Basically, the mechanic, uh, mechanist... So the mechanics, the base ID is they are not a spellcaster, but what they do is they use like the it's really hard to explain and it takes a little bit of like imagination from the player side depending on how you want it to work in your world in your universe basically they open up like they believe that the universe is one big mechanical thing right so magic and science and math and everything is all makes sense into like one clockwork thing almost 
and the mechanics just know how to open that up like a pocket watch and tinker with it and then close it back down and have the universe around them do stuff that they want to do. So in order to do that, the Shard of Creation uh, is a shard that they have in, they call it like a liquid, uh, fluid-like bundle of plasma. I I don't know, for me it wouldn't be a fluid-like bun bundle of plasma, for me it would be like... Uh, comparable to that grenade terminal detonator that uh, Princess Leia is holding in the third uh, uh, in, in episode six, uh, where she goes like, uh, where she's like plays the bounty hunter, but she has this terminal detonator, that kind of thing. That's how I see this device. It's like a device, and it opens up and does all kinds of crazy stuff. And the shard, with the shard, you can basically do a bunch of stuff. And I really like these mechanics. I'm gonna go into what I really dislike in a bit. Um, I really like this because. There there's a bunch of things that you can do. The shard has a number of charges equal to your int intelligent modifier, minimum of one, and you regain all expanded charges when you finish a long rest. Charges, uh, so not a short rest, although they're a uh, martial class, martial classes often get stuff back at uh, short rests. This is a long resting, which I like. Charges can be spent to activate the following properties. Inspire, or transform. Uh, inspire is when you make an ability check while touching the shard. You can spend one charge to roll a d6 and add the number rolled to your check result. Um, they don't go into you also being able to do that to an ally, which the word inspire kind of like... I don't know, when I read inspire, I just kind of want also to be able to do it with an ally and inspire them to make an ability check with an extra d6. It's basically a bard, bardic inspiration kind of thing. Um, I don't, know, I don't know, it probably will go up. Probably one of like the subclass features might say like, oh, now this Inspire feature becomes a D8 and then it becomes a D10 or whatever, I don't know. Um, while touching the shard, you can use an action to transform it into any type of non-magical weapon or shield or any other object medium size or smaller. The object appears in unoccupied space, blah, 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 blah. Rules, blah, 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 rules, rules, rules. You can also have it like, if it is appropriate size to be worn or held, you can choose the object, the object to appear in your hand or on your person. Whoa, shit, I spilled coffee. I spilled I spilled coffee! I spilled coffee! Help me! Dealing with that later. So anyway, that is um, the main class feature of the uh, Mechanist, which is great, right? I like that. They have this, um, this, this bundle of plasma, rules as written, that they can transform and do things with and change the universe around them with. Now, one thing that I really don't like is this. First level mechanist feature, Eyes of the Maker. When you touch a magic item or some other magic imbued object, you learn its properties and how to use it, whether it requires attunement to use and how many charges it has, if any. You learn whether any spells are affecting that item and what they are. If the item was created by a spell, you learn which spell created it. There is nothing that says... Like, this is basically an unlimited use of the identify spell. Maybe not, not like exactly 100%, but basically it's an unlimited use of the identify spell. At level 1, unlimited. It doesn't say you can do this a number of times per day, or you need to use one of, this, uh, uh, one of the charges from your shard of creation, which would make much more sense. It's just like, hey, you have a magic item, you know what to do. It's just you touch and you're like, oh, this is a phone, you can call your mom with it, right? That's, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Um, there's so many points in my games where I have moments that I want to introduce a magic item and be super vague about it. And I want my characters to go through a shit ton of trouble in order to find out what it exactly does, what spells are affecting it, what its uh, downsides and upsides are, boons and banes or whatever. There are so many times when I do that in my campaigns that this class, somebody playing this class would completely, completely and utterly destroy A lot of my games, a lot of that aspect of my games. Now, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a game master with experience. I can probably work my way around that. But rules as written, th this is just as a level one feature. 
where a wizard would take an identify spell, which they can only cast X amounts a day if they prepare it. A mechanist can just take it. And they just know everything about a magic, everything. They know, learn its properties, how, how to use it, whether it requires attunement, how many charges it has, and if, if any spells are affecting the item, and what those spells are. If the item was created by a spell, you learn which, which spell created this. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, that's... That's, uh, I'm sorry, I really want to like this class. No, I really like this class, I really do, but this I can just not at all agree with. If this would reach, if this would be like the final design in the book, I would just tell my players like, hey, you can play the mechanist, but that level one feature, that goes, that goes out the window. I'm sorry, but it goes out the window. Or I would have it use, maybe I would have it use a, one of the shards of creation, type uh, uh, charges, right? Which would still be powerful, but then players must choose like, do I want to use one of my charges because I might want my, char my, my charges to be used for Inspire or I want to create items or whatever. Uh, another feature, you gain the ability to channel magical energy, energy into items. To use this ability, you must spend one hour focusing on the item I wish to augment while, while remaining in physical contact with it. You gain two augment effects of your choice. Augment effects options are detailed at the end of the class. So we don't know exactly what those are but i like the idea i like the idea of the mechanics being able to first of all create a bunch of mundane items out of like this thing they have i like how they can use that item to to be better at something or whatever and i like how they can uh, imbue magic um magical energy into a mon otherwise mundane items i really love that um about the mechanist i i the game design wise and flavor wise and everything the artwork also by the way is absolutely amazing i just do not agree with the eyes of the maker class feature or being a level one feature maybe make it a level 10 feature or something like that i don't know uh but yeah that's the mechanists and i'm super excited for tales of the valiant until next video bye bye